Hey everybody, I am here with Hannah and Alexandra, who are not only the filmmakers, but the actors and the everything behind this wonderful film. Uh, and we're gonna talk about The Planters. What's up guys, how you doing? Hey, hi Mark. Hey, <laughs> I'm starstruck. You guys, oh, did we are too. you guys did the, you did the acting and the writing and the directing and the producing and the, and the camera and the lighting and the sound and the props and and you very much remind me of um, my brother and my wife and myself when we were making movies in the early days um, and um, it was really inspiring to see and I guess my my question my first question for you guys is you apparently go way back I'm, I'm hearing like back to like third grade so this dream of making a movie together, when did this start to crystallize for you guys? And, and how did this thing come together just, you know, from, from the beginnings of your partnership? So when I was a teeny little eggling until it hatched into a phoenix bird. Uh, <laughs> well, as you know, as you mentioned, we met when we were in third grade. I was the new kid at school and I was definitely a weirdo. And Hannah was basically my, one of my like two friends. Uh, and she was immediately nice to me. And so we started this, you know, kindred connection very early. Then we went to middle school where we were complete, <laughs> you know, middle school is like the worst age on earth. Uh, and we still maintained a friendship through that. And then- I'm in, imagining and, like oh, a, pen, a pen 15 kind of vibe in middle school for you guys. Oh, oh my gosh, exactly. <laughs> That's, yes, for those of you who are pen 15 fans and you have not seen this movie, you're gonna like some things. Anyway, continue. Yeah, and we're kind of like doppelgangers for them. We love that show. Um, yeah, so in middle school, actually Hannah uh, directed her first film in middle school and wrote me into acting in it. So that was probably the beginning of my acting. It was about a su suicidal preteen and I remember, this is a, such a short story, but I'm gonna tell it anyways. Hannah wanted to make me cry, so she told me to think about my parents dying. And of course, <laughs> I made me cry. <laughs> really she got, she got me there emotionally. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then, you know, as we got, you know, life kept going and um, the beginning of this film was we started actually writing a previous film called Peachville, which is our second feature. Mm -hmm. uh, and we wanted to show proof of concept and The Planters was essentially like, well, it kind of blossomed and exploded, but it essentially was our proof of concept for Peachville. So that was the, the seedling behind the planters. You know, it's interesting when you talk about this movie being like either a stepping stone or a proof of concept. I think a lot about um, creatives and, and having like two projects going at once and how healthy that can be for you. And a lot of times the piece of art that is the either the most important one or the one that works is the one that you're technically like having a little affair with as you're trying to make the big one work. And it sounds like the planters was this thing kind of like that for you, except for the fact that it took like how many days to shoot? Like a hundred and 127. Okay. So let's talk about 127 days. Another, <laughs> another great independent film, but also the days. Oh, is, yes. is it called 127 days? I think it is. Yes, so, it is. It's so yeah. Funny. So, um, the traditional story of the independent film is we did this in seven days. We did this in 12 days. What I love about what you've done here is you made your cast and crew so tiny <laughs> that it wasn't expensive to shoot more days because it was just yourselves. And my good friend, Patrick Bryce and I made a movie called creep. That was just three people. And we shot for so many days trying to get it right and trying to get it right. And I think that helped us make a, a decent piece of art because we were just relatively inexperienced artists. So I love that you gave yourself the time to get it right. But talk to us about what was the real need for those days? How much was reshooting versus rewriting versus just coming up with new stuff as you went? It's a, it's a, it's a different process for indie film. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we started out with a six week plan and we thought that was a lot of cushion for a no crew indie film. And I think about like day three, we were like, this is not gonna happen in, in six weeks. Although I think we were still delusional. Like we kept pushing the schedule back like one week, you know, like yeah. week increments. But did you have a full script at that point and you knew your story and everything? We did, we did. Um, and uh, at midway through the process, we did, 
revisit the script and throw out a, a handful of scenes because we were like, this is going to take us seven years as opposed to yeah. four. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, we, um, I, I mean, I think the only way we got through it really was we thought it would end sooner. Yeah. I don't think we knew it was going to take that long. Um, I think we also knew as, as difficult as this process was that this would be the most um, uniquely like freeing artistic project we'd probably ever be able to do in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so I think we kept reminding ourselves of that. Like this is it, like this is the most blank canvas we have. So yeah. we just, I think leaned into that to kind of get through it. Um, I don't know if that answers the question though. No, it does. It's such an interesting um, perspective that you had while you were making that movie. I know hindsight is always twenty twenty, but I find that a lot of independent filmmakers spend most of their time being pissed off that they don't have the resources and they just can't wait to get out of their independent film so that they can get into a better funded film. And the fact that you had some appreciation for the value of what it was in the moment is critical. And, and it's a message I'm constantly trying to tell independent filmmakers is there is a good chance that your first movie with your loved ones, your friends might be the peak creative experience of your life, that everything after this might be more financially successful, might get more viewers, might even be a better piece of art, but for experience itself, you will certainly remember this forever for better or worse. Um, I wanna talk about your collaboration together because my brother and I are obsessed with this. Obviously you've known each other for a long time. You, there's, a, there's a striking similarity in terms of trying to make art with someone who knows you the best, right? And, <laughs> that comes with wonderful ups and wonderful downs. Um, and Jay and I wrote a whole book about this. <laughs> like we were obsessed with when we are bringing out the best in each other, when we are smothering each other's individuality with the nature of our codependency. And uh, we try to be honest with each other and not hurt each other's feelings, but it's difficult. So how did your friendship fare through this? When did you learn oh my God, maybe these are my strengths, maybe these are Alexandra's or Hannah's strengths. How did you not step on each other's toes? When did it really go well and when did it not? And, and, and you know, what did you learn? Good question, Mark. Um, I would start by saying, I don't think this process would have been possible if we didn't have a really strong friendship because it, I mean, you're, we lived, to, we literally lived on the set together for, that period of time. I could feel that like when I was watching. Yeah, you're like, they live there. They definitely live yeah. there. They um, have no idea what's going on. They have completely lost themselves. Yeah, we've lost ourselves. <laughs> yeah. um, so I would say that it wouldn't have, we would, if we were fighting all the time in such, you know, with no crew, it's just the two of you and a couple, a, plus a couple actors, we just wouldn't have gotten it done. So I think we needed that, you know, strong foundation and and the good thing about being friends, or I'm sure brothers, is like you kind of know what the other person's good, better at than you. <laughs> you just know it. Of like now, going into you the know process. it, but being able to admit it, embody it, and not be threatened by it in the process is a, is a separate thing. So how did you guys do on that front in terms of, you know? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's definitely a compassionate side. Like Hannah knows I'm terrible with organization, and she just mm -hmm. like, you know, in the morning, she's like, okay, this is the checklist. And, but it's not in a, oh God, I have to do it type yeah. way. You know, it was just understanding what, you know, stuff we can give to the other in a pretty, yeah, yeah I would say, I would say selfless. I mean, in terms of, you know, obviously you're two different people, two different personalities. So sometimes you may react or say things in a way that you're like, okay, can you either say it more can you just say it to me or yes. can you like kind of like chill out a little bit and not yeah, say some, it? Some people want it harder and some people want it softer. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so I think that our yeah. different, per you know, sometimes of course you have to navigate yeah. that, but I think that's just natural and normal. So. Yeah. And Hannah, what do you guys do? Jay and I have a little system for this. But what do you do if there's ever a disagreement, creatively speaking, when you share directing, share producing, share writing, if you're in the middle of a scene and you say, I really think it should go, this way or I think it should go this way and you both come to an impasse how do you how do you mitigate that as a you know a true creative team yeah I feel like we do your typical yes and like I think there are conversations but it's like why not try 
Like I may not feel that note, but like, let's try it. And then yeah. let's try the other one. And like, I think that's kind of how we worked was like, let's go in all directions if there was a impasse. Yeah. Um, which was rare, but I'd say it never felt like the ground was, you know, shattering yeah. below us. It was just like, oh, okay, let's, let's yes and try that. Yeah. Um, yeah we didn't have to stop production for the day and be like, we, we just need to like figure our shit out. That actually, yeah. did that ever happen? I don't remember that happening, did we? Between no. us. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Really, <laughs> yeah. That's that's really great. Great. I mean, I mean you guys were. Like, 120 degree, having to turn the AC off. Oh, yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. Sure. Like, that may there, have... there was there was a attack of some flies at some point. Oh yeah, it was. That looked that looked a little like you guys were saying that there was a fly attack, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I saw a piece of footage. Where it looked <laughs> like your white outfit was like fully chocolate chip, and I was it like, was all the most insects. disturbing thing. I mean, that yeah. was. We were. You, we were in a teeny town in New Mexico that I we were told had the last public hanging ever. Just fun fact about this mm-hmm. town. Um, and just us crazy girls in really weird outfits wandering around this town. We, we shot the exterior store, exterior church there. And this man, when we were shooting all the exterior church, came up in his car with his window down and had a gun on his front seat and was like, hey girls, like you should know the, the flies are coming. <laughs> and we were like, oh my God, he's gonna kill us. Okay, yeah, we're leaving. He's like, they come around five, we're like, mm-hmm. And he leaves, we're like, we have to shoot this really fast because he's gonna come back and, and kill us or kill Yeah, him. you're like, this is, a, this is a Hannah and Alexander movie. This isn't a Stephen King movie. <laughs> <laughs> you don't come up with guns in a truck and say the flies are coming. Yeah, and then sure enough, like this, swarm of flies came and attacked us it was real it was uh it was pretty intense i hope that uh you released that featurette with uh, <laughs> there's uh for those who don't uh know this is a wonderful little featurette about some of the behind the scenes challenges they faced uh making a movie with just two people and it was not only the blood sweat and tears of filmmaking but also um some biblical type plagues <laughs> <laughs> Of, of flies and locusts and shit. Um, it's pretty intense. Um, okay, so you guys make this movie. It's, it's 127 days of shooting. You really, you know, got your product. Now it's 2020, and how are we going to get this movie out into the world? And it's, and it's tricky, you know? Um, so talk to me a little bit about, you know, going to film festivals, what that was like, because you know, there's a lot of disappointments and a lot of ups and downs. A lot of people think, oh God, if I don't get myself into Sundance, then am I a failure? But that has, that's changed a lot through the years. You, know? you don't necessarily need that anymore. So talk a little bit about your journey from finished film to you know, getting out into the world. Yeah, I think that, um, yeah, we didn't go to Sundance and we actually went to Raindance, which sounds a lot like Sundance. <laughs> yeah. And that was our, our first you know, world premiere in London. I mean, it couldn't, honestly, we did not know what to expect. Of course, you have big dreams for your film, yeah. but then you start being realistic, like, well, maybe it won't be what we want it to be. You know, we just want it to go, so we want people to at least to be able to see our film. And when we got into Rain Dance, we're like, yes, okay, it's starting. And then we won film of the festival at Rain Dance, which was a complete shock because we weren't even in competition. So we're like, oh. I guess they don't like us that much. Yeah. And then, but then we ended up winning like the highest honor at the festival. And from then on, you know, we went on to Nashville Film Fest, Austin Film Fest. We just, and we just started- Racking up people. awards everywhere you went. At, li- literally every festival, it was just, it was so mind blowing for us. And so we just felt extremely, extremely lucky that we were being embraced because we weren't sure it was going to happen. We were like, oh, people don't really care. <laughs> you know, maybe they don't care. I don't know. You know, but they do. They cared about our film. They come up, they, it resonated with people. And we we're like, maybe we're the only two who are going to like our film. <laughs> um, but, you know, so I think we got, a, we got really lucky with the festival run. Um, and then 1091, you know, has been such a great distributor for us. And they've had a game plan from the beginning. Yeah. And so we're going to, we're going to be out there. We just, it's just the coolest thing ever. Well, I want to say that you didn't get lucky with the festivals. 
um, you made a great movie and, and I like your movie. So at least there's three of us here. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, I, I remember feeling when I, our first little movie got out into the world, I remember I kept thinking like, God, we got so lucky. We got so lucky. And, and, and I remember one of the programmers took me aside and they're like, this, don't, it's not luck. You worked really, really hard and you made a, a great movie. Um, I want to ask both of you uh, real quickly about being a female filmmaker team, um, which uh, is for whatever reason, a little bit rare, you know? Um, there are lots of brother teams. There are, there are almost no sister teams. <laughs> um, you guys are kind of, you know, uh, almost, almost sisters in a way, or cousins, you know? And um, they look alike. I, I know for myself that, you know, there were, there were precedents. There were the Coen brothers and there were a lot of white males like Richard Linklater and, you know, who were paved the way and gave me the confidence to step into making an independent film and feel like there was a path for me. I can't help but think of your story of two girls who went out to the middle of nowhere with no one else, with literally zero support systems. You, you dredged this whole movie from thin air. Um, and did you, it ever occur to you as you were making this that it is kind of rare for, for, for two female filmmakers to be a creative team and build something out of nothing? Did you feel like that was an impediment? Did that intimidate you, inspire you? Like where, how do you view that? I think um, it was only in hindsight, for, for me at least, that I realized, or maybe it wasn't in hindsight, it was probably towards the end of shooting that I was like, oh, this is different. Like, no. I, we don't, you know, I, it, it is important for us to step into that identity of being, mm -hmm. uh, we are female filmmakers. Um, but I think, as people just wanting to make art at the nugget of it wasn't like, Oh, we're doing this as women. We were just like best yeah. friends going out to the desert shooting something. And then I think we realized, I, at least I realized more in hindsight that there was like a, Oh, this is different. And this is special. Yeah. Um, what about you, Alexander? Did you feel it at all in the process or? I just knew that, you know, this is actually, we started doing this in 2015. So this was before Me Too. And I mean, there was already conversations about like mm -hmm. representation in Hollywood that had already been going on. Yep. Um, but it wasn't, I mean, they were like, okay, Directors Guild, are, the women are in the single digits, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like you've heard of these kind of, yep. you've heard of these statistics, but um, I think we just realistically knew who was going to give us money for our film. We're like yeah. two girls, like, which is not popular in Hollywood um, and trying to make a feature who've never made a feature before. They have no, so I just think we understood even some, I did, I, and I think Hannah did too, obviously as well, that no one was going to give us the money to make our, our peach oil, our second dream film that was, you know, maybe not a multi-million, but like a million buck film. Yeah. Like who's going to give that to us? So uh, I think now, yeah, yeah it's, it's quite... There's an old expression that uh, someone taught me once that says, use the sword in your hand. Um, mm -hmm. And it seems like that's basically what you guys did, which was like, okay, this is something that we can do um, without having to wait for anyone to give us permission or to anoint us and to keep going. Um, and my last question for you is, now that you have done this, right, you have you have almost destroyed yourselves in the process of making a piece of art and you are here and doors are going to start opening for you. And you may think to yourself, Oh, I don't know, but they will because they do because you're talented and you made a great movie. Um, where are your goals at this point based upon how hard you worked on this, the positives and negatives of such an intense collaboration that was truly your own full ownership, but obviously very difficult versus maybe heading towards some projects with a little more support, some projects with a little more money, what you might lose and gain by opening up your creative collaboration. How are you feeling about what is to come for you guys and what are you craving? Well, you, I'll let you take this. So head I, think, I think we're really excited to work with the crew. <laughs> I'll say that to start. I think we are excited to expand our very weird bubble. 
You mean uh, you don't have to hang your own lights to feel creatively fulfilled? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, I think that's very fair. Yeah. I mean, it's, you'll, we'll miss it though. It, there, is, there is nothing you understand probably more than 99.9% .9 of people. Like what a special experience making your first film is and making it with mm -hmm. such a skeleton, like with, with just you and, yeah. your, and your loved ones. So definitely we'll miss it. I look forward to having more of a budget and a crew, but you know, hopefully we can re remain that, keep that spirit. I mean, you had, that's what you've done successfully is you've kept the spirit and the independent spirit within you and your work. And that's well, something, that see, is. you're someone we can look up to. You might not be a woman, but we can look up to your um, ability to retain that because a lot of people lose it and we don't well, want that, you know? Well, I'm not a woman. I've got strong female energy, I've been told. <laughs> it's run by women. I live in a home with my wife and two daughters. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we, to your previous point though, I was going to mention like it, it doesn't have to be, and it usually is not a linear path about what types of movies you make and whether their budgets increase. You know, I went from making a $10,000 movie with the puffy chair to a $50,000 movie with Baghead, And then I jumped up to like a $6 million movie and then I missed it. And then I came back down to making like hundred thousand dollar movies again. And then right when I was making some of my biggest budget stuff, I ran off and made creep for 500 bucks with my friend. So um, I think that you'll never forget what this was. <laughs> you, the further you get away from it, you probably will find yourself craving some elements of that. And, and there, are, there are absolutely ways to get that, you know, through the years. And sometimes you can have that level of intimacy on a, on a huge movie, depending on the people. But, um, you know, I hope you know that, and feel that you have accomplished something that uh, most people don't, which is uh, you stuck through the impossible and finished your film. And then beyond that, you accomplished something that most people don't, which is you made a movie that's cogent and works and is good, which is so hard to do. Um, and uh, I'm just so excited to see the world see this movie because it's so full of charm and smarts and heart and humor and it's very uh very mature in my opinion uh for a first feature it feels more like a fifth or a sixth feature so um for those of you who are watching this right now you're going to have an opportunity to see the planters in the middle of october it's going to head out to some limited virtual cinemas and some really fun screening events like rooftops and drive-ins you can look in selected cities for that um, if you don't have access to that on December 8th, it's going to go out wide on VOD for rental. Um, that's the day after my birthday. <laughs> if anybody wants to get me a birthday present, please rent the planters and enjoy it. And most importantly, if you're intrigued by something here, remember there are very, very few female filmmaker teams and there are almost zero going out there and working as hard and as long as these guys did. So support this movie, support the things you love or they will go away. Um, guys, congratulations. Thank you so much, Mark. I mean, Thank you so much. I mean, you really, you did it and the movie's awesome. And uh, I can't wait to see what you guys do next.